The men's singles final was a battle between Tom Spear, a composer from Denver, and Terry Moore, a homemaker from Chicago. But Spear was anything but composed when he beat Moore for 6,000 bucks. Wow, my yeah. friends were real supportive. It just sparked me at the end there. I thought I was going down. Terry's yeah. awesome. Over 13 and started playing my first tournaments when I was 14. That was 1974. This particular crowd is about um, a very big handful of players that uh, have come right out of the 70s when foosball was uh, sort of climbing and reaching a peak as far as um, the purses involved in foosball and so forth were uh, the tournaments were sponsored had multiple sponsors and, and a great deal of money uh, for the 70s anyway and that ignited the sort of whole country here uh, you know with respect to foosball. Um, I think back in the um, 70s, 80s, 90s it was probably one of the premier places to play. We had some of the top players in the world. Todd Lafredo, Tom Spear, just Names like that, Rick Lucas, the names that you don't hear anymore. Um, but uh, it was pretty big. And, and so when we held tournaments, we would draw people from other countries. Todd Lafredo came along and um, won his first world championships in 1977. And when that happened, uh, everybody was having to compete now against Mike Bowers, who was a world champion, and then Todd Lafredo. I'm a whore for the game. <laughs> Colorado was a foosball mecca. And because of that, there were a lot of good players, a lot of, well, at one time, we had so many world champions here. And if you could win one of our local tournaments, that would be easier than winning a world championship because a lot of these guys didn't travel. The men's singles final was a battle between Tom Spear a composer from Denver, and Terry Moore, a homemaker from Chicago. But Spear was anything but composed when he beat Moore for 6,000 bucks. Wow, my yeah. friends were real supportive. It just sparked me at the end there. I thought I was going down. Terry's yeah. awesome. Tom Spear was blessed with not only his intelligence, but how to use it, and especially at the game of foosball. When I was growing up, he was basically uh, Larger than life is the way to put it. He was very smart, always articulate, immaculately dressed, in tip-top condition his entire life. He was a prick. <laughs> yeah, I did not like him for a long time. He was just a selfish, you know, selfish, mean, and I eventually found him in that, but it took a while. Barbara Parker and I am a secretary here at the Rising Church. I call him Thomas, that's how he introduced himself to me and so I, I always call him that. Um, he came to the church and asked, he told me he needed to do community service and it's the first time I had an interaction with him um, and and I said of course you you know we do community service here all the time and and he said well I've been to 13 other churches and nobody will let me work there and I said you're welcome here. He said, I'm afraid that when I'm in here that my dad will send demons and I don't know how I'm gonna act if that happens and I don't wanna hurt you. After that, I, I called our resource officer with the Arvada police and just to get a little info now, cause uh, that started 
making me a little concerned. And she said, she said, you're the first person that's really had contact with him and had a conversation. And so I kind of filed that away and thought, well, let's just see if we can build a relationship with him. You know, Tom's probably one of the most contacted people here in the city. I think the community is interested in Tom's story. They see this man that has walked these streets for years in this city, and they want to know, you know, why hasn't he gotten help? Does he not want help? Um, I've had a lot of citizens call in and say they've tried to give him money or food, and he doesn't want it. He doesn't want the handouts. So they're, they're interested in who he is and, and what's going to happen to him. The first thing I noticed was he started asking me religious questions, and Tom's not a religious guy. Just the fact that he said something made me made my eyebrow go up, and I thought well, that's kind of weird. I think he I think he's comfortable where he's at, and that's the problem. With most of these people, they're comfortable where, with where they're at. They don't want to be in crowds of people. They don't want to do the things they used to enjoy because they they really are focused on right now. And so when I see Tom Spear like he is now, I, I, I'm saddened by it. I want to help him, but you don't know what to say to him. Sometimes the situation is just bad and there's nothing you can do. And I think that that's probably, you know, where it's at. We all want Tom to come back, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Final match of the weekend. Open singles final on the left of your screen. Big Terry Moore. On the right, Tom Spear. Terry Moore, of course, originally out of San Diego, California, now playing out of Chicago, Illinois. Tom Spear out of Denver, Colorado. Here's Moore now with the first scoring opportunity of the first game. 